Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the town hall meeting uh, uh, to discuss uh, the status of the city of New Orleans. It's so uh, great to see so many people uh, in the city uh, willing to come out and, and discuss exactly what's happening uh, in our wonderful city. Basically, what I'm going to tell you today is what I know today. Here's the deal with housing. Since we've had so many homes flooded in the city of New Orleans, a lot of it depends upon where you are as it relates to the 100-year flood plan. And it's different depending upon whether you're at or above the 100-year flood plan or whether you're below the 100-year flood plan. That's the first thing you need to focus on as a homeowner, all right? And then from there, we go into whether you've been flooded or how much damage. And we have a team of inspectors that have been going around the city of New Orleans inspecting homes. And as of this date, we've inspected 50,000 homes on the East Bank. And if you go to your home and you're in one of the areas where we have already inspected, you will find stickers on your homes. There's either a green, a yellow, or a red sticker. All right? Green sticker means there's no damage that we can see. You can go in, you can clean up, clean out your refrigerator, and get started, do whatever you need to do. A yellow sticker means that there is some damage to your home, or you've had some flooding. And according to the federal rules, the trigger for whether you can demolish or choose to demolish your own home is whether you had 50% damage or more. So the first issue is whether you are at or above the flood plain, the 100 year flood plain. If you're below it, then there's a different category for you. So then the next question is, do you have flood insurance? If you have flood insurance and you're at or ab above the flood plain, then you can just go through your insurance company and collect uh, your flood insurance and deal with your property insurance uh, and things should be okay. Uh, the only caveat is if you have a mortgage that is larger than the total amount of coverage for flood insurance. And normally flood insurance uh, tops out at about $250,000. So if you have a $300,000 mortgage, and then you still have some damage, even though you're above the flood plain and you had flood insurance, you collected your policy, your mortgage company says, okay, that, that check is in my name and it's in your name. So they're going to take that flood insurance check and they're going to probably use it first to pay down your mortgage. Then you may still have to renovate your home. All right? It may cost you fifty to sixty to seventy, eighty thousand dollars to renovate your home. And we have been struggling with this particular issue to try and give you some advice and trying to wait on the federal government to tell us what needs to be done. And here's what we suggest that you do. We suggest you get with your banker and you take the flood insurance check and you work a deal out with your banker to say, look, I want you to apply this to my balance and I also want you to advance me a line of credit so I can do my repairs. And then I want you to combine those two mortgages into one. So if you had a $3,000 monthly mortgage payment, when they combine those two together, they paid off most of your first mortgage, and then they've loaned you some money to fix your home up. And you can go to the SBA, and you can get another, a loan through the SBA that's guaranteed. It's 2.67%. And I know they take a long time and all that. I'm just trying to give you some solutions to think about. Now, whether it works or not, at the end of the day, on the timeline that you need it to work, that's something each individual is going to have to work out. But I'm just telling you your options. And your options are to either go to your banking institution and get the money to renovate your home or to work through the SBA on a guaranteed basis. And combine those two loans together, stretch them out, and most likely your, uh, your monthly payments would be lower than your original payments. Now, what if you're at or ab above the flood plain and you have no flood insurance? For some reason, you were advised 
that because you were above the 100-year flood plan, that you did not have to have insurance. I'm personally involved in this case, all right? So I know this issue. Uh, I have a mortgage, and they told me that I did not need flood insurance in New Orleans, which is, uh, which is amazing. So you're at or above the floodplain level, so you can start to rebuild. All you need to do is come to us. We're going to give you a fast track uh, permit. You're going to be able to go out and start your renovations, uh, regardless of where you are uh, in the city. Uh, this all assumes that the Corps of Engineers is going to do what they said they're authorized to do, and that's to build the levee systems up to 17 feet. If your home is flooded substantially, and even though you're above the flood level, but you still have substantial flooding, and it's over 50% uh, damaged, you have to do a major renovation. You have to do a gutting. You can do what they call a gut rehab. And you will have to go in and gut your house and get it to the stud level. You have to take everything else but the studs and then be in a position to start rebuilding from there. You don't have flood insurance, so you can't go to FEMA for support uh, as it relates to other uh, financing options. But you can start the process of gutting your home. Uh, and then, once again, you can go to either your banker or to the SBA to try and get financing to help you with the rehab. If you're below the floodplain and you have flood insurance, then it gets a little complicated. If you have less than 50% damage to your home, so you've had some flood and you have some damage, we've come out and we put a yellow sticker on your home, you have less than 50% damage, you can start to rebuild immediately. You can apply for a fast track permit. Uh, you can get going, uh, and you can do the same gut rehab that I talked about also, but you have some other options. The gut rehab is most likely paid for by the owner. If you decide that you don't want to go through that, and you're below the floodplain, and you want to demolish your home, and you want to just have to start from scratch, then you can get with the Corps of Engineers, and the Corps of Engineers will come out and they will demolish your home for you, free of charge. All right? And then you can go to the SBA and, and your banker. Yeah, Liberty Bank is probably in here salivating, wanting to talk to a bunch of y'all, a bunch of us. And you can then start the process of rebuilding your home. If you're below the floodplain and you have more than 50% damage, then you're going to have an issue. And the issue is you have to build your home up to the floodplain level, all right, which was going to cause you to raise your foundation to those levels. If you have flood insurance, uh, FEMA can help you with that. And they can provide you with a grant of $30,000. It's a 75-25 match. So that means if you have flood insurance, you're going to have to take some of your proceeds from the flood insurance and put it toward this thirty dollars or $32,000 to raise your foundation. And they tell me that the average cost of raising a foundation to get it to the flood plane is about $40,000 for a slab house. All right? And then you get into the gut rehab and, you know, whether you want the core to tear your house down, you still have uh, some of those options also. And then finally, if you're below the flood plain and you have no flood insurance, um, I, I don't have a lot of options for you. Um, the thing I can tell you is that by federal law, you're required to raise your foundation before you can rebuild. Um, now, if you decide you want to tear down your home, you're below the flood plain, you have no flood insurance, and you just say, look, I want to start from scratch. You can get with the Corps of Engineers, and they can, uh, they can demolish your home for free and get that done for you. Uh, if you want to rebuild, uh, then uh, there's going to be another uh, issue that uh, you're going to have to deal with your bankers and the SBA 
and whatever support that we can give you. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I know that I threw out a lot of information. But here's the other thing that we've been trying to figure out and work through. For the folk who built their homes at or above the floodplain, and they took out a mortgage, and the FHA or whomever told them that they didn't have to have flood insurance. And now they're coming back and they're talking to the insurance adjuster. And the insurance adjuster is basically saying, look, we can't cover anything below where the water line was. So that basically means that all the contents in your home are no longer covered, regardless of what fancy homeowner insurance policy you have. My, I have somebody very close to me that has this particular problem. And I think that's incredibly unfair. And so what I'd like to do is to start to build some support for us to all collectively start to lobby Congress and to get this fixed. If I bought a home, and somebody advised me not that I did not have flood insurance and this event happened, then the insurance company should pay at least for my contents. And then we can figure out whatever else we need to do based upon all the other rules that I have. But what I'm starting to realize, ladies and gentlemen, is that Washington is very skeptical about helping us. And it's very clear to me that if we don't start to help ourselves, and we don't come together as a community in a spirit of unity, we're going to get left behind. Because Florida just had a major event, and they're getting all kind of resources. Everything. And God bless Everything. them. But I think it's when we come together as a community, and we start to lobby, and we start to make some things happen, we'll make ourselves whole, but they're going to help us also.